I want to talk about him as a player now a little bit more. You mentioned sort of how impressive he was in the early days just there. But going further back than that, obviously, you know, came through the Anderlecht Academy, went to Man City and clearly impressed there before moving on as well. Um, from a piece for The Athletic, you spoke to Gene Kinderman, is that right, from the Anderlecht Academy. Now, I suppose you can sort of elaborate on his development, if you like, and just how much did he wax lyrical about Lavi and what he was like as a youngster and stuff? Essentially, Gene said that he could not read Romeo Lavia as, as a character. He said he never knew what he was thinking, but he was, a, he was a very quiet character. But he could speak multiple languages. He was one of the most popular in the dressing room and growth coming through the age groups at Anderlecht. And what what he said was that, you know, he, he thought he, typically he would sign that contract when he turns to 17 or turns to 18. Like everyone should, you know, Anderlecht's a brilliant academy, brilliant club. He'd have a pathway. So he actually invited Roberto Martinez to talk to Lavia to convince him to sign for about for for Anderlecht. And that even didn't do the trick because I think Lavia is a is a guy in a hurry. He saw Pep Guardiola liked him playing in the Kevin De Bruyne Cup a few years back before that. Vincent Company and Craig Bellamy talked to Pep Guardiola and said, Listen, this guy's a serious player, you have to sign him. And he went over just before COVID. And I think Gene Kindermans and a lot of Anderlecht uh, staff thought he'd struggle. But I think he, he loves he loves the challenge and he loves living on his own as well. He's very he's very single minded and he managed to thrive there. And when he didn't get game time at Man City, he thought, okay, what's the next step? And I think that's what he's thinking now as well. So yeah, that story about Pep Guardiola going over to see him when he was invited by De Bruyne uh, to, to see him in a tournament, um, yeah, it's sliding doors moment, I guess. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Yeah, and it's fascinating that. The people we're talking about, like they're they're genuine bona fide sort of names mm. in the game, and they're waxing lyrical, talking so admirably about this player. There's clearly a serious talent there, and um, obviously schooled at Man City thereafter. In terms of his playing style, can you tell? Mm. Like, is that the type of player he is? Obviously, Pep Guardiola's very ball playing, you know, keep possession orientated. You mentioned earlier that he. Style didn't really suit what Southampton were about. <laughs> Can you tell that Lavia is a sort of a level above that in many ways? Yes, yeah, Southampton couldn't keep hold of the ball, and it, it was just a bit ping pong in midfield. Where if you, you know, Andalette and Man City, he was essentially cut in the character of, of Rodri, really. And it's just a shame that Rodri was standing in his way because any other club, he'd probably be their number six right now. Um, he, it's interesting because in the Belgian national youth national teams, they sometimes use him as a centre back and as a number. Right, they thought obviously it's athleticism, he had good uh, pace, but I think Guardiola and and especially Southampton as well see him as that number six in a in a four three three, someone who could get the ball for the goalkeeper turn and play forward. And I said uh, a few weeks back before the interest of Saudi Arabia in Fabinho that I thought he'd he'd probably take his position, and the fact that obviously Fabinho might be leaving now, always leaving, um, that's probably where Jurgen Klopp or Arteta or any of those top six clubs will, will see him in that number six role. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's where I certainly have shoehorned him, earmarked him into that six. And on just on that, because I wanted to ask then, he's clearly very young still. He's 19. You know, he's had one good season in terms of his own personal performances behind him in the Premier League. Do you think he's ready to sort of step into those boots? Because as much as Fabinho was miles off it last season, you know, we're not too far removed from having a conversation about him being one of the best in that position in the world. So I think personally, I kind of thought Lavia comes in when Fabinho wasn't going anywhere and sort yeah. of learns, continues to develop, acts as a bit of an understudy. Now yeah. Fabinho goes. Do you think Lavia is ready to come in and be the frontline choice in that role? I do. I don't want to sell him too much to, to Liverpool. Go for it. But, um, <laughs> I, honestly, I think I think he is. The only issue is, is that he had that one full season and there were times where he would break down physically. So he had a big hamstring issue and then he came back uh, in February time. And he'd sometimes struggle to complete games. You see him often going down in games with with cramp, with you know hamstring niggles. So if he was going to play, hopefully, what if Liverpool see it, sixty games in a season or whatever, or 50, 50, 55, I think that could be a challenge for him, especially being at the first team. So you probably have to share that with someone. He might have to play sixty five percent of the games and then just share it and and be like that because he's only young. He's still growing. He's still physically developing. And I'm sure Klopp would, would probably want to te- test him to his limits physically as well. Something he's probably not had uh, at Salampton as much. Um, so he's obviously in only in his second year. But I think in terms of technical quality and, and tactical understanding, yeah, he's he's more than ready to, to go right into that little midfield. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Because like, like you said, the demands on a midfielder in this Liverpool mm. system, we've seen numerous ones and some of the more durable ones actually not cope with it, you know. So it can be quite testing and it'd be interesting to see mm. whether Lavia 
I suppose whether we can do it week in, week out, or have Europa League football as well to contend with Thursday, Sunday, potentially. Um, and the problem mm. is, from a Liverpool perspective, is that his rotational option, if it does happen like we think it looks like it might now, his rotational option will be Pachetic, who's similar age, like very yeah. two young, very young lads there to sort of share the burden. So interesting to see how it pans out. Um, in terms of his ceiling then, you've seen a lot of him. You clearly feel like he's a very, very talented individual. In terms of his ceiling, sort of what are we talking about? How far do you expect this young lad to go? I spoke to a few Sam supporters and, and people at the club and they say they haven't seen a, a player like him since, since Gareth Bale at the club and when he broke through. I think he's probably going to be at one of those elite clubs, of course. You've got to preach caution at times, but I think if he was that good in the Slampton team, which was that bad, um, I, I can only imagine you know how good he and how high a ceiling will be when everything suits him and he's not having to do as much work as he was at that Slampton team. A lot of the time it was him and James Ward Prowse just running after everything and every, everyone else going anywhere they want. So um, I, I think he'll will, he'll will be even better um, at, at a more functional club and yeah, I think he can for sure play in that top four uh, and challenge for those top honours. I, I do think that and I think he's been earmarked to do that since he was a kid really. Um, and the fact that Slamton have managed to get him for a year and, and almost and a hire him for a year, rent him out for a year was I think it's going to be a privilege for them and they'll look back on that in a few years time as a, as a real coup. Hello, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that section of my chat with the brilliant Jacob Tanswell. If you want to watch the show in full, head to redmenplus.com, sign up as a captain or a legend, and you will get the rest of that content, plus all the other amazing content that we do day in, day out here at Redmen TV. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. If you need more Liverpool content in your life, whether it's podcasts, videos, interviews, or great Liverpool documentaries, head over and subscribe to Redmen Plus dot com today it funds everything we do across all the free platforms and we give you amazing content each and every week